Hey there, Parker Reed here, and welcome to PR Media, your home for all things physical media through my eyes. And today we have the ugly stepsister of the top 10 4K Blu rays of 2022. This is the top 10 worst 4K Blu rays of 2022. And I don't like making this kind of video, I don't like being super negative, but you all seem to love my rant, so here we are. And a side note before we get started here, I made a conscious effort in 2022 not to buy every single disc that I saw. I wasn't reviewing movies regularly, and I wasn't reviewing releases regularly, so I didn't feel the need to go out and buy everything. So there are a bunch of films that I did not want to buy in 4K because I heard they were bad, and there was a bunch of releases I didn't buy because I knew they were bad. So the 10 releases that are on this list might not be the worst that were released last year, but they were the worst that I saw and that I purchased. So just knowing that going in, and I I did have to also make a concession and show movies that were just not very good that are on the format. So the transfers might not be bad, but just the movies are bad and don't need to be purchased on 4K. So let's get started here at number 10. So the 10th worst release that I have here is Downton Abbey, A New Era on 4K Ultra HD Blu-ray. And I thought this movie was pretty good. I saw it in the theater and I watched it at home. The transfer looks pretty solid. It looks pretty natural. It's not super flashy. But this movie didn't need to come to the 4K format. I mean, the television show doesn't even have a 4K set yet. So without that, having both of the movies on 4K doesn't make a ton of sense. And this is a movie I could have bought on Blu-ray or just watched on streaming. Didn't need to own the 4K disc, but... Here we are. And it's officially Morbin time because number nine is Morbius. God, this movie was freaking awful. And I love that it just became a part of meme culture. And then it got a re-release. And then it totally bombed on the re-release just like it bombed upon initial release. And I own this movie just because I'm kind of a superhero completionist. So if I have a bunch of movies in the same universe, I can't just take it some time off and not buy the next one that comes out. I had to buy Morbius because in that awful Sony offshoot MCU version, whatever the hell they're trying to go for nowadays. I had to buy Morbius. I didn't like it. I didn't enjoy it. Some of the CGI looks awful. And this 4K disc is not one you need to own. But for whatever reason, I bought it. I guess I'm a sadist. Coming in at number 8, we have... Uncharted. Uncharted was a very generic Indiana Jones style romp. It didn't look anything like the games. It didn't remind me of the PlayStation games that came out. It's just kind of generic and some of the CGI is bad and the movie's not great. I wouldn't even recommend watching the movie, especially owning this 4K disc. Just pass in this release like I should have. Coming in at number 7 is a movie I enjoyed that was a little divisive among Marvel fans. Number 7 is Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. One of the best Marvel movies to come out last year, in my opinion. I think they did not have a great 2022. But a lot of the CGI in this film, it feels a little unfinished, it looks a little unpolished, and that does not lend itself to a great 4K disc. The detail on this is really good. The music on here is great. But some of that, that CGI is just what ends it up in this top 10. It's the only Marvel release besides Morbius, and I don't really consider that a Marvel movie, um, that's in this top, I mean, bottom 10. But overall, this release, it's just a little lackluster. A movie like this deserved a better transfer, and Sam Raimi deserved a better transfer. And overall, this movie was a bit of a letdown, and this disc is a little bit of a letdown as well. Speaking of divisive films, number six is Don't Worry Darling in that weird obscure 4K disc I had to get off of Amazon and it was nowhere else. This movie, I enjoyed it. And while Harry Styles could have been a much better feminist by backing up Florence Pugh in this whole situation and the drama surrounding it, this movie I felt was pretty unique and I enjoyed the twist in it. I know some people kind of thought it was cringy, some people didn't love Harry Styles acting in it, but I thought it was alright. But this 4K disc, the visuals aren't great. I mean, the detail on here is not where it should be, the color grading is not where it should be, and it's just kind of a weird, nothing kind of disc. I should have just bought this on Blu-ray or watched it on streaming. It's nothing special, and for what I paid for it, I certainly regret having bought this on 4K. And overall, Don't Worry Darling is a sort of skeptical recommendation in terms of watch, but in terms of buying this Blu-ray, don't. And coming in at number five, I cheated a little bit on this release because it was released initially a couple of years ago with like this box set, but it got a single disc version in 2022, so I'm including it. It's the classic animated film, Akira. I enjoy some anime on 4K sometimes. Ghost in the Shell, I think, looks pretty good, even though the transfer wasn't universally praised. 
but this transfer it doesn't look good at all it looks very lackluster and i did not enjoy watching it on the 4k experience i think a blu-ray would have served this well maybe even a dvd i know you're probably shuddering out there but that's what i think of akira and this release was a bit expensive and the movie was pretty good but the transfer just looks grainy it looks old and older animation does not yield itself i got reminiscent feelings of watching transformers the movie on 4k and if you see my review of that it's not a good thing so overall akira uh not recommended for me and it's in my bottom 10 4k blu-rays that were released in 2022 I'm a firm believer that not every movie needs to come out on 4K. Some of them were not made with the intention of being viewed in that high of video quality. And included in that is the Rankin and Bass Christmas Classic Collection. That being Santa Claus is Coming to Town, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, and Frosty the Snowman. They're all in this kind of collection, so I threw them together here at number four. And... The reason that they're on this list is, especially Frosty the Snowman, that animation is not holding up. It looks overly grainy. You can see every imperfection in it, and it just looks blurry and not great. It's the best it's ever going to look. And some of the work on Rudolph and Santa Claus is Coming to Town look all right, but Frosty really brings it down. These movies were not made to be viewed this way. They're meant to be viewed on public television in the 90s and 2000s and look just kind of like a novelty movie. They're not made to be this very this great audio and visual experience it looks a bit rough and while i enjoyed revisiting these classics on this disc they just i wouldn't recommend them to you pop in a dvd or pop in a blu-ray you're going to be well served and it's going to be much cheaper than these were Coming in at number three at my top 10 worst Blu-rays of 2022 list is John Travolta in Saturday Night Fever. This is a movie and soundtrack especially that I really enjoy, but this disc is not good at all. The visual quality is awful. The detail is not there. It's The grain is just all off. I, I don't know what they were doing with this release. It doesn't look very good at all. I expected more from it, and it really disappointed me. So unfortunately, John Travolta in Saturday Night Fever is number three on my top 10 worst 4K Blu-rays of 2022. Coming in at number two is Planes, Trains, and Automobiles. And this is a movie that really confuses me. It's very hit or miss. Some scenes in this look serviceable, the detail is there, the grain is there, and it looks like a classic film on 4K Blu-ray. But on a few other scenes, there's some very noticeable digital noise reduction, and all the grain is scrubbed away, and all the detail is scrubbed away, and everybody looks waxy, and they look like they came out of Madame Tussauds Wax Museum. I don't know what they were doing. I don't know if they had to work with different sources on different scenes, or some uh, different scenes required different attention, but they didn't stick with the uniform look throughout this movie, and it's very odd. It's like you're going in between DVD quality and 4K quality, then Blu-ray quality for a little bit, back to DVD, and it just it's a very uneven experience and it's unfortunate because this is probably the best thanksgiving movie of all time that well it's probably one of the only thanksgiving movies of all time and this deserved a little better treatment sure it wasn't priced out of the moon it came at a very affordable price but I think that's because they realize that it's not a good transfer and it's super inconsistent. And this is going to be end up being like a 5 to $10 title here by next Thanksgiving. So pick it up then. It's probably the best this movie has ever looked because the Blu-ray transfer was also awful. But I wouldn't recommend this 4K transfer. Very disappointing. Like I said at the beginning of the video, this list was really hard for me to make because I avoided all the bad transfers and bad movies as much as I possibly could so there are no honorable mentions these are all dishonorable mentions so we're gonna go right into number one and this movie at number one is number one by a long shot like multiple football fields this is the worst release of the movie by far and unfortunately it was the first release of 2022 on 4k it's pirates of the caribbean the curse of the black pearl I love this movie. It's a childhood classic, and I enjoy the series as a whole, but holy mother of God, this is awful. It feels like Disney got this transfer back, and they're like, okay, that looks pretty good. It looks pretty natural, pretty even. Let's just increase the contrast on this to where the sky looks white, and everybody's faces look like they're just drenched in shadows. I don't know what was going on. There were scenes where people were on boats in the middle of the ocean, and it looks like they were standing in a cave. What the fuck is going on, Disney? and there's a reason why they don't have any plans to release the other three Pirates movies in 4K because they fucked this up so bad and their reputation among the 4K community is so poor no one's going to buy any more films from this on 4K 
yeah, what the fuck were they doing with this? That being said, also the audio is subpar. It's like, it's fine. It's a little below average. But the 4K on this, the amount of digital noise reduction and the amount of grain that was scrubbed away from Captain Jack Sparrow's face, it's a goddamn travesty here. I can't emphasize enough how much better the Blu-ray looks than this. I showed it again to my partner and she's like, yeah, the Blu-ray looks a lot better. It looks a lot more natural. You can actually see what's going on in people's faces. And on this, it looks like a dark goddamn nightmare. I hate this release. Don't buy it. If you see this, like just try and hide it in your nearest Best Buy, like hide it behind the washing machines or something. So no one is suckered into buying it. I own it just for the novelty of how bad it is. And I'd like to show people and show you how bad 4k discs can look and don't take good ones for granted because you're going to get pieces of shit like this don't buy it i wish i hadn't there you have it those are the top 10 worst 4k blu-rays of 2022 in my opinion and thank you so much for watching this video if you liked what you saw here you can check us out on facebook or instagram and like comment and subscribe if you so choose my name is parker reed you've been watching pete r media keep supporting physical media and i'll see you next time thanks guys